Howdy everybody. Welcome back to the channel where we go in search of wildlife photography. I'm Doug Wallace for the Wildlife Gallery. Can you hear them in the background there? Snow geese, spring migration at Los Bluffs here in Northwest Missouri. You probably see a bunch of black smoke going on. They're burning the area today as well. But uh, how's that gonna affect the uh, uh, bird photography today? Well, come along with me. Let's go find a spot and sit down and talk about it. <laughs> All right, guys, they're still a coming. I'm about out of one memory card already. I gotta slow down on the shutter button. These 20 frames a second's just insane. You just fill one up so easy. But there was some good ones right there. <laughs> I should have been trying. I'm trying uh, zone AF, I'm trying spot, I'm trying eye detect, and eye detect is working pretty well. It'll finally pick up on one bird, and then when I see it, just I just try to pick out a pair or something out there is what I'm trying to do with the uh, eye detect. And uh, when it does that, I'm hitting the shutter button, and uh, so anyways, I thought I'd just turn you back on and let you listen to the sound of the snow geese. Uh, they've slowed down a little bit here, but they're still coming. Several hundred thousand out there in front of me right at the moment. So. Target rich environment. I keep saying that, but it's a fact. Man, there's a couple of thousand coming over the top of me headed into this very spot right here. So. <laughs> Holy moly. All right, going to shut you off again. Man, oh man. I've already went through one battery too, so... And I do have uh, stabilization shut off, and I'm uh, running 5,000 on my shutter and 320 on ISO, 5.6 on the F-stop. Unbelievable, guys. <laughs> I hope, <laughs> I can't even tell, looking back at that screen, I didn't even realize them swans were still in there. I would like to have gotten some flight pictures of those. But man, guys, uh, I thought I had all my batteries charged up today, and uh, I just ran through my second battery. I've got one left in the truck, and I can use the battery out of the 90D for the R5 as well, even though I hate to do that. And I guess I forgot to shut my GoPro off, and now it's dead. So. All the videoing that I planned on doing today is not going to get done. Uh, so many geese here. I've done ran through one memory card. I don't know how many pictures of uh, snow geese one person needs, but uh, that's the other bad thing about uh, uh, 20 frames a second. Uh, I just actually switched it over mechanical mode, uh, dropping it down, but still. No, that's a lot of a lot of uh, frames per second, and quickly fill a memory card up. I just feel like every time I see a, a, a goose coming in that's close, that I that that might be the shot. I don't look at the back of my screen. Uh, I just can't tell anything off that little screen most of the time. But uh, anyways. <laughs> Uh, running through memory cards and batteries is never a bad thing as a wildlife photographer. All right, what I think I'm going to do, I'd actually brought a lunch, uh, excuse me, got a little shiver there. I'd actually brought lunch with me today, but I think what I'm going to do is probably run into town and get lunch there 
uh, where I could uh, plug a battery up while I'm eating lunch. Uh, right there is just too perfect coming in nice and slow. <laughs> oh, breaks my heart not to be pulling, uh, pushing the shutter button on it. All right. But I think that's what I'm going to do is probably run into town and uh, get a bite to eat where I can plug a battery in. At least get another one partially charged. So. All right. Thanks for tagging along with me here on the channel, everybody. I hope you're able to get up here to nor uh, northwest Missouri one of these times to Los Bluffs and witness the spring migration of snow geese. Just astounding how loud and deafening they are. Uh, there's hundreds of thousands of them here today. Last Thursday there was like 2.3 million of them like I said on the other video. So still quite a sight to see and who knows how many more will uh, uh, pile in here today. Uh, they have uh, workers on the area burning uh, weeds and brush and stuff like that the last few days. So I think that may have uh, pushed some of the wildlife out of here. Like all the pintails that was here last Thursday, I have not seen a pintail at all today. Now I have seen some uh, hooded uh, mergansers, hooded mergansers, and some shovelers. And I think I got a pretty decent picture of a shoveler a while ago. Uh, lots of trumpeter swans still here again, Canada geese. Uh, been about 20 bald eagles I've counted today. I did get a picture of a hawk that quite far away. That's when I put my extender in earlier. Um, but I've seen lots of hawks. I've probably seen a dozen hawks, 20 eagles. But for some reason, it just seems like today all the eagles and all the hawks uh, have been on the wrong side of the road, all backlit. Uh, so I haven't even taken any pictures of them except for one immature hawk. Uh, immature uh, eagle, I'll take that back, but it's not a very good picture either. He's pretty high in the tree, uh, but he was on the right side of the road, lit really well. So I just uh, I just pushed the shutter button once on him, but as you know, that's probably 20 pictures of that one immature eagle. So I think I'm going to save my batteries, uh, go into town, get a burger, plug a battery in, and uh, these geese will still be here until later uh, this afternoon and I plan on being here till uh, about dark. I'd like to get some golden hour um, shots of them. I got a lot of backlit shots here today which can turn out kind of nice uh, and some of these geese will just stay right up on the road for you. They won't even hardly move and you can uh, get out of the vehicle and get low and get some pretty nice shots of them there. So I know I got some nice shots here today. Um, I'm having better luck running uh, the um, the 600. <laughs> uh, when I was here last Thursday, man, it just really struggled, or I struggled with it, uh, getting focus on stuff. And I can tell today what I'm doing is uh, a whole lot better. I'm having way more success with it than I did uh, last week. So, anyways, uh, I keep rambling here, uh, just running my battery down. At 90D, I can run all day and probably half of tomorrow on one battery on it. But, all right, guys, let's go to lunch, and then we'll come back after a while. See, here's three nice slow movers coming in. Just broke my heart right there again. Holy moly, guys. Oh, what's going on here? Alright, see if that don't make things look a little better. Well guys, I don't know how many more uh, snow goose pictures I need. I've got thousands upon thousands of them. Naturally a lot of them haven't turned out, but a lot of them have. So, um, what time is it? It's 2 o'clock. Um, I think I'm going to go see if I can find something else. They're burning the area today, a lot of smoke. Uh, there was a lot of eagles here earlier. I counted like 20, but these all staying pretty far off the road. A uh, lot of people here today. It's a Wednesday right smack dab middle of the week. I would have thought uh, today would have been a uh, 
Not as many people here is what I'm trying to get at, but man, oh man, it's been terrible. You can't hardly uh, find a spot to shoot without somebody running you over, or a lot of these snow geese will stay right on the side of the road. And, uh, people just have no ethics or morals or anything. I don't, I don't guess, but uh, it it amazes me. Most of the people here have cameras uh, you know want to get pictures you would think they'd have a little more consideration than what they do but man what a terrible community a lot of you all out there or a lot of you all out there are pretty terrible in this photography community uh, just no respect at all but anyways I'm gonna see if I can go find some ducks or maybe a hawk uh, uh, eagle something like that to set up on I seen a northern harrier hawk right before I left to go to lunch I think what I'm gonna do is go down there set up along the road and see if I can't uh, maybe photograph him I'm gonna spend rest of my time uh, trying to get that uh, northern harrier hawk that was the main purpose of me coming up here today anyways and uh, so anyways let's go do that guys and I'll talk to you when we get set up down there all right, everybody, or I'm going to do the final update here at the house instead of at Los Bluffs like I had planned. I did go and get set up on uh, the spot where I'd seen that Northern Harrier Hawk, and I did have him come by. I only got five or six uh, shots of him, and every one of them uh, was blurry. And when I got to looking at it, I only had my, I uh, ran my shutter down to like 2,000 uh, and I had still left off uh, my image stabilization. So that's why they turned out blurry. But uh, uh, on this day at Los Bluffs, a uh, couple of days ago, man, there was just so many people. And where I got set up and had the camera on the tripod and everything, I had uh, uh, some people stop, want to know what I was getting photos of, and another photographer stopped, want to know if he could uh, set up there with me uh, since I told him I was uh, there was a Harrier Hawk in the area there. So, and then had uh, a couple of ladies come by. They just parked their car and got out and took off for a walk. And there was a lot of ducks and stuff just a oh, quarter mile down the road when they got down there. Of course, all the ducks flushed and stuff, you know. So uh, on this day here, you know, uh, Los Bluffs is really uh, rich uh, in targets if you're going there. And I highly recommend going there, especially in the spring if you're after snow geese. But a couple of things to keep in mind if you do decide to go is what the weather and stuff's going to be like. So... Last week when uh, myself and a couple of friends were there, uh, it was 10 degrees outside, wind blowing about 20 mile an hour, so it was bitter cold. And we were the only people on the area until about 2 p.m. that day and like three or four other vehicles showed up and that was it. You know, but I, like I said in the other uh, video is uh, there's also trade-offs there. We're getting in and out of a warm vehicle, so I dealt with a lot of heat haze, especially with that big uh, 600 millimeter prime lens, you know. But on this day, it's like 60 degrees, and at any given time, I would guess there's a hundred vehicles on the area. You just simply couldn't stop anywhere and try and get uh, good photographs or just be off by yourself and just sit there and wait to see what would show up. You just, uh, there's just too many vehicles on the area and uh, all the, uh, most of the hawks and stuff like that and the eagles. And now they were burning on the area as well. So that didn't help. But if you're going to be planning it, you might keep that in mind that uh, probably the colder it is outside, the less people that's going to be there. Uh, so you'll have less intrusion on you. And like I said in one of the other segments there, there's a lot of uh, uh, people that on the area, they're photographers or they're going out to get pictures. And it's like, be damned if someone else is going to be in a spot. They just barge in or... You know, I was actually laying on my belly trying to get some uh, nice close-up shots of some snow geese in the road. And this individual could see me laying there 
and they just come flying by at about 30 mile an hour and just spooked all the snow geese off. So that's the type of thing that you're going to deal with when there's lots of people on the area and they just, they, all they care about is themselves and what they can get. But uh, do your research um, on the area. The, and the area also sets up kind of backwards really for um, photography, uh, the water and stuff, the way it sets. Uh, if, if you're there of a morning time, you're going to deal with a lot of backlit shots. And then if the winds are out of the northwest, they're going to be landing wrong. I said that in the other video. You know, so uh, what I found after two trips, especially afternoons are really going to set up better. But if you're going to have to drive a long ways like I do, then you're just going to end up making a day of it and make the best out of your trip that you can. But uh, I just wanted to uh, give a final update uh, as to why you didn't see me finish this up uh, on site. And that's because I just ran into too many people that afternoon. Try, I had two cameras set up and I'm trying to film myself, you know, and talk about what's going on. And it just got to be impossible with the amount of people that were there that day. But anyways, I was able to end up with some uh, really good shots. I uh, ended up with a really good hooded uh, merganser shot and uh, some flight shots. I really figured out. Uh, my uh, lens and my camera and stuff like that. So it was worth the trip uh, going there again, driving six hours total. But uh, anyways, keep that in mind if you're going to go up to Los Bluffs in northwest Missouri. Uh, if you're after snow geese, once the word gets out, if you have warm weather, just be prepared. You're going to put up with a lot of intrusion as well. I got there at daylight, so like 6.50 a.m. I get there, there's six vehicles in the main parking lot already. And <laughs> so that just kind of lets you know that uh, if it's cold and miserable outside, that's probably going to be a better day. If you're going to plan a trip, you'll just uh, deal with a whole lot less people. So thanks for watching. As I always say, make sure you're safe while you're out there getting your wildlife photos with whatever camera gear you're doing it with. Just be safe, have fun. I'm positive somebody at home would like to see you again. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.